Good morning, my friends. Today is the day. This car, Bobby's new, new to us 2017 NSX, is getting thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of maintenance. Now I tried for three days straight to get actual pricing on what this would cost at the dealership and I could never get a clear answer. If I was to truly bring this car into the dealership, it would have been an absolute nightmare. 2017 NSX and I need a bunch of maintenance done on it. I just need to create a file for you then. It needs new tires, new brakes, twin motor unit, gear oil change, transmission and clutch fluid, all that change. Four tires. Mounted and balanced is one thousand nine hundred and thirty and ninety six cents. My parts manager will have to give me pricing on everything. I have your phone number here. Um, cool. Um, once my parts manager comes in, I'll get all this pricing and I'll give you a call right back. I appreciate it. Thank you. And anyone you spoke to is probably left for the day. Um, is this just for the oil change or the oil change and tire rotation? It needs new tires, new brakes, the. TMU oil change, gearbox oil change. Oh, geez. So this isn't just regular maintenance? No, no. He said he was going to talk to the parts manager and call me back. Um, he would need to call you tomorrow morning, um, select all of the different part numbers. Technician has not been in yet, um, so that's what they were waiting on. But I can give you the, the pricing that they gave me for the tires. So it looks like for the tires, they gave me 569.76. dollars And then when will I know pricing on the fluids? Um, so my NSX technician will be here on Monday, so we should be mm. able to have that pricing for you on Monday. So I'm going to do it myself. So here's a quick overview of everything that we're doing maintenance-wise today. All new tires. If you guys follow me on TikTok or maybe Instagram, you would know that we already had one blowout the other day. So, of course, being like an all being an all-wheel drive car, you want to replace all four tires at once. Tires are getting down there anyway. We're putting all new Michelin Pilot Super Sport or Pilot Sports or something, I forget what they were. New brake pads, these are the carbon ceramic brakes. Rotors are perfect, so new brake pads. Twin motor unit is in the front. So I believe that is the motor that drives the front wheels. That fluid needs to be changed. The gearbox fluid needs to be changed. And then the dual clutch transmission fluid. There's two fluids back there that need to be changed. So we're gonna do all that. And I plan on refinishing the wheels and maybe a couple other little goodies as well. So let's do a quick rip to the shop. See how beautiful and glorious this twin turbo V6 sounds and go from there. We got the car in the shop. Let's get her on the lift for the very first time and see what the underside of this thing is all about. There's so many undershields on this car. The whole underside is just one big fat panel. Unfortunately, it looks like this front panel here, she got a little bit chewed up. Nice goodie bag there. You can see how flat, I'm assuming for the aerodynamic purposes, the underside of this thing is. And safe to say, we're definitely getting our life out of these tires. Holy smokes, these things are shot. So I'm going to start off this day by doing the tires and recoating the wheels. Now this tire right here is brand new, being that we had that blue out. So even though I just put this brand new Michelin tire on this wheel right here, it's gotta come back off because I want all the wheels refinished. This is probably the worst of the wheels. Scuff right there, road rush there, or curb rush there. Scuff right there. stuck on there. I bet if I cleaned up that little bit of rust on the hub, the wheels would come off much easier. Into 
the stripper tank they go. Nice. I can fit two at once. After a quick sandblast, the wheels are ready for powder coat. We are doing a new color today. This is obsidian black from Prismatic Powders. The goal with this was to have a very, very high gloss black that was scuff resistant. The ink black that I usually spray for a high gloss looks very, very nice, but after a while, it kind of loses its shine from cleaning the wheels so much. This should hopefully take care of that. We all know as soon as they're powder coated and out of the oven. Wheels are fully coated. We'll see how they look, man. I'm a little bit nervous. They're not gonna be the right gloss level. The wheels just came out of the oven. Guys, look at this freaking finish, man. It's been a while since I had powder turn out like paint. Like the flatness of everything is just, these are perfect. And of course they do need to be perfect for such an expensive car, but I definitely was not expecting that type of perfection. Now before the wheels go back on, let's go ahead and knock out the new brake pads. So being that this car does have the carbon ceramic brakes, the only pads you can run are OEM. And they cost about a thousand bucks. Half of it is probably because this high quality packaging. So this here is what a thousand bucks in OEM Honda slash Brembo pads gets you. All of the pads, these here I believe are the wear indicators some grease, the pins, rear, front, and a full instruction sheet. The pads look relatively simple to get off. We have this bolt right here, 13 mil nut on the backside, pin here, pin here. As soon as those three goodies are out, we can go ahead and remove the brake pads. It doesn't look like the fronts are terrible. Still a little bit of life left. The brake wear light on the dash was on. <clears throat> hmm. I don't know if that's normal, but they're cracking. Is that normal? I'm a brokey. This is my only car with carbon ceramics. New ones definitely do not look like that. The instruction sheet does say to put a little bit of this Brembo lube where the pistons go. Something like that. Spread it around. This probably makes them anti squeaky. Usually it's kind of tricky to get the pistons pushed back in but for some reason these ones move so easy you just touch them pretty much and they slide in they are the same inside to outside new pins new thingy and lastly the wear and indi wear indicator cable goes on it clips into the pads and one clip in each pad kind of interesting Alrighty, there we have it this side is done. That was just as simple as a Evo or an STI. So I said the fronts weren't in terrible condition. Some cracking, which I feel like is probably common for a carbon ceramic brake. But my friends, very, very happy right now that I'm doing these because the rears were about to destroy the rotors. You see that? It appears to be copper or brass or something. But these things, the rears completely gone. Very, very happy right now that I am doing the pads. So the wheels and tires are finished. That was the most time consuming thing. The brakes are finished. That was fairly time consuming. Now let's go ahead and knock out all of the fluids that I wanna replace. So we have the TMU fluid, which is up front. It's the twin motor unit, two motors. One's like a brake side. It's part of the hybrid system, powers the front wheels. That fluid I wanna go ahead and replace. And then we have two fluids in the rear. Transmission and clutch is what it would be considered. So let's get all that swapped out. To do everything I'm about to do, you need five quarts of this fluid right here. It is the GoType 2.0 Acura. I believe Honda should be the same. And then the ATF DW1. I'm going to start up front with the twin motor unit fluid. We have this pretty big giant skid plate right here that I should most likely replace. That needs to come off. Torx bits up front, key 30 Torx bit. And all the other bolts is a good old 10 mil.
Oh man, that is weird. For those of you who have never seen what a twin motor unit looks like before for a hybrid system, this is, if I'm understanding the system correctly, this is what strictly powers the front wheels. There's no sort of drive shaft that goes to the rear diff. It's not like the traditional old school mechanical all wheel drive system where it's all integrated in one, completely separate than the rear. But here we have our drain and here we have the fill. <laughs> At least they made it easy and it does say right on it, ATF. I'm gonna start out with cracking loose the fill. And the drain. So the twin motor unit is gonna take 2.56 quarts of the ATF DW1. I got this little Harbor Freight special pump. Should do the trick. Front's all finished up, TMU is changed. Moving on to the rear, I went ahead and pulled off that rear plate. Underneath the plate is this big old bracket. It takes a very, very odd socket to get it off, but a 15 millimeter also kind of works. Come on. Well, I worked on two of them. The others are too tight. What kind of freaking socket is that? It's not a Torx. I've never seen it in my life. Rear is a little more complicated than the front. It looks like the diffuser now also has to come off, which hopefully that will be able to be removed without pulling the bumper. It's looking more simple to just pop the whole bumper. Okay. That wasn't so bad. Two bolts on the entire bumper and the rest is clipped on. Super simple. The rear is a little bit more confusing. So we have the ATF DW1 that goes in right here. There is the drain for that reservoir. And then for the gear oil, we have a drain here and a drain right here. And the fill for the gear oil, the Go 2.0, is this one here. I'm really curious how this compares to working on, say like a Huracan or a some other type of supercar, you know? Even still, working on this is a little bit trippy. I gotta be quite a bit more careful because every little thing is like $2 billion to replace. This exhaust looks like it would take about 10 seconds to swap out though, so that's cool. Just so I don't get things confused, I'm gonna do the ATF first and then do the other, the gear oil, later. That would probably be fairly catastrophic if I mixed them up, which I could definitely see how that'd be possible. It was around three quarts of ATF, and it's looking like nearly five quarts of the 70, the 7585 Go Type 2.0 gear oil. With the gear oil, what you wanna do is get as much as you can in there. We're about 3.8 quarts right now. We're gonna lower the car down and run the car, engage the transmission, and get the trans temp up to about 100 degrees and then put in the rest of the fluid. It needs about another quart and we should be good. All of the work is finished up. From here it's just reassembly. So we have rear bumper with the fuser, which I'm scared to put on. Don't want to scratch anything. And then we have the skid plate and wheels. Some good old freshy meats going on. Michelin PS4S is what these are. Pilot Sport 4S. Tires are fully mounted, balanced, ready to go. Two of the wheels are coated with some ceramic coating. It's a new kind of coating I'm trying out. I have two coated, two non-coated. I'm gonna see how good it works. And if it works good, I'll let you guys know. Okay, that looks pretty nice. Hopefully Bobby likes. That looks really nice. 125 foot pounds of torque on the lug bolts. And this thing is ready 
for a drive. We do need to drive it a bit to clear these codes, being that it was on the lift. Spinning the wheels, it doesn't like it all that much. So let's go for a drive. But first, how does she look? Oh man, that looks good. Look at the freaking gloss level on those wheels. A little bit more than factory. I think it looks really nice. Let's go see what Bobby thinks. Two minutes of driving, all the codes are cleared. Before, it was just stuck in sport mode, which is boring because the exhaust is quiet. In sport plus, this thing is a ripper. You're not gonna look at the wheels? I didn't know I was supposed to. Where's my cup holder at? Well, the car is all complete. I swear this thing shifts way smoother now with the new ATF and the new gear oil. Of course, we're not worried about blowing out tires now with the new Michelins. And of course, these wheels look so freaking good in the new Cardinal Black from Prismatic Powders. If you have a 17 plus NSX, hopefully this maintenance video helped you out. If not, hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.